Good morning, Good morning. and welcome to worship at St. Paul's on this Trinity Sunday as we celebrate the God of creation made known in Jesus Christ and with us always through the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much to Finley and to Helena who are sharing their God-given gift of music with us this morning. You may follow the bulletin, which is available on our website, stpaulsardmore.com slash virtualchurch. Everything you need to fully participate is included on the, in the bulletin, and there is also a link for um, Sunday School lessons. You are also encouraged and invited to subscribe to the St. Paul's YouTube channel. We are always grateful for your continued generosity during this time in sharing your financial resources. Through you, we are making a difference in the world. Thank you. Today, we begin our worship with a time of silence. As we rest in the presence of the Holy One, our gracious God, who made and continues to faithfully hold our world. Our God who shares our pain, our sadness, our righteous anger. Our God who promises to be with us always. We continue our service today with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Let us confess the ways that we have fallen short of the glory of God. Reconciling God, you seek peace and unity among us but too often we choose walls of isolation. You seek to be one with your creation, but we turn away your new spirit. In your forgiving love, break down the barriers we create that we might see more clearly your love for us, be reconciled with our neighbor, and trust more deeply your promise of abundant life. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. By God's grace and by the gift of faith, we look to the future in hope. We are free to repent, to turn around and face our fears. We are free to listen, to really listen to one another waiting for hope with all who are alienated and hurting. And we are called in the waters of our baptism to active reconciliation and healing. Through the Holy Spirit, God gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness into his most marvelous light. Together, we are the body of Christ, co-workers together in God's new creation. Amen. Amen. Let us praise God, the Creator, who is filled with glory and power, with holiness and splendor. Let us praise God, the Son, who is filled with love and compassion, with justice and peace. Let us praise God, the Spirit, who fills us with faith and joy, with creativity and imagination.
love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, and the life of the Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Triune God, we celebrate this day the majesty and the mystery of your name. You are both infinite and intimate, known and unknowable, transcendent and transparent. In love, you have made us your own and invite us to join in your divine dance. Empower us to live in communion with you and one another as instruments of your love and compassion for the healing and transformation of our world. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. O oh God of joy, from creation to resurrection to Pentecost, draw us into the rhythms of your love and send us out into the world to dance in freedom and compassion and new life. Amen. A little boy asked his mom, is God everywhere? Yes, Joey, God is everywhere. And then he went on to inquire, is he at McDonald's? Yes, Joey, God is at McDonald's. Oh, is he in this room? Yes, he is, the mother responded. Is he in my mug? And now the mother, growing just a little irritated, said, Yes, Joey, he is in your mug. And the little boy, clapping his hand over the mug, exclaimed, Got him! Well, today is Trinity Sunday. It's the Sunday the church seeks to understand God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as three in one and one in three, wrapping our minds around this notion challenges us to open our imagination to consider a mystery beyond what mere words can ever convey. Indeed, for 2,000 years, at great councils with top theologians in preacher studies as they struggle to prepare their annual Trinity Sunday sermon, and in the homes of believers, when children ask simple and profound questions, the church has tried to shape a vessel of words to contain the triune mystery of God so that, well, we could clap our hands over it and say, got him. But just when you think we have him, God always eludes us. For the truth is, no matter how many unpronounceable words we use or ethereal examples we espouse, the eternal majesty, the incomprehensible glory of God lies beyond our ability to fully grasp, but we sure try. Martin Luther warned, trying to deny the Trinity endangers your salvation. Trying to comprehend the Trinity endangers your sanity. But today, we are going to explore the Trinity as a community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in a living and dynamic dance of love and self-giving. It was Gregory of Nazianzus, a fourth century archbishop, who used the word perichoresis to describe the mystery of the union of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Peri meaning around, like a perimeter, and chorea, like dance, like choreographer, like to dance around. When Gregory came up with is this image of the Trinity, he was thinking of a circle dance. 
Father, Son, and Spirit joining hands in a circle of boundless love engaged in the dance which is their life together. A dance without beginning and without end, a dance which is joy beyond all telling, twirling so quickly that they look like one, and they are intertwined together, dancing, spinning, love and creation cannot help but be flung from their dance. And here we are because of it. And we are invited to join the dance. In our gospel lesson for today, we find the disciples on a mountain with Jesus after the resurrection. Some, well, some are ready to dance, uh, but some aren't. They're hesitant, uncertain, you know, some are doubtful. They've seen too much of the hate and violence of the world. And then Jesus reassures them. He says, the dance isn't up to you, that he is the one who has the authority in heaven and on earth. It's Jesus, he's the one who makes the music and he's the one who guides our steps. So just imagine Jesus as one of the professional dancers on Dancing with the Stars, who step by step takes the clumsiest contestant and turns him or her, well, into a dancer. Jesus, our Lord of the dance, invites us into perichoresis, the dance of the Holy Trinity. Jesus, being Jesus, won't let us line up on either side of the school gym, boys on one side and girls on the other side, and a chasm of fear in between. No, Jesus sends us out on the dance floor of our world, and he says, go, go. This is the same voice that said to Abraham, go to the land I will show you. And to Moses, go bring my people out of Egypt. Now this voice, the voice of God, speaks through the risen Christ and says to his disciples and to us, Go, get over your fear, your hesitation, and just go. Jesus invites us to enter the world, a world that is chaotic, that sometimes these days feels void of life and hope and trust that God is really there, hovering over the waters of pain and discontent and fear and to step out onto those waters he's asking us trusting us that we won't walk alone because the trinity is already there in our world the trinity is already dancing and inviting us into the dance our country feels especially chaotic right now. It's easy to try to avoid the chaos, to well, hunker down, to not watch the news. But Jesus' great commission invites us to enter the chaotic places without and within, to join the dance in ways both big and small with the new thing God is doing in our world. The truth, truth is not God is doing, the truth is that God is doing a new thing. And new things always demand change. Change not only in our hearts, but also change in our systems and institutions, and that takes work. As we look at our country, the Spirit is revealing systems that have been broken and festering for a long time, systems and institutions which have denied equality and justice. And as I was reflecting on all of this this week, I, I, I started to wonder, 
I wondered if these ruptures that we are seeing right now may be glimpses of how God is working in our world to bring about needed change and healing and transformation. Sometimes God is the still, small voice, but sometimes God is a pillar of fire. In the past weeks, we've seen the many ways cities throughout, citizens throughout our country have joined the dance. And these are such simple things We've seen people, young and old, black and white, coming together to clean up the streets of Philadelphia after the chaos of looting. We've seen an officer in Louisville hugging a weeping teenager. A sheriff in Flint, Michigan, takes off his helmet and lays down his baton to join the protesters. We see a black man afraid to walk alone in his neighborhood, joined by 75 others. We see policemen throughout the country taking a knee as a show of understanding the pain that is in their communities. And in Minneapolis, cars lined up for miles, not to get food, but to drop off food for others. And just here in Philadelphia, a protest leader approaches a battalion of police in riot gear and offers them bottles of water. Simple, ordinary things. It's the dance. Jesus invites us, too, to join the dance and to live out our faith in being caring and forgiving and loving and compassionate, beloved people of God. And yes, sometimes that includes expressing our righteous anger. Jesus says something so critical at the end of our gospel, Jesus says, it's like he's saying, remember that when you get self-conscious or when you run out of energy or when you get frustrated and, well, you just want to get angry and just give up, remember that I am with you always. I am with with you always. The dance of the Trinity is the dance of love and freedom and dignity and equality and truth-telling and compassion and new life. Come, Jesus is inviting us. Come, Join the dance. Amen.
on this Trinity Sunday, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Amen. Held together in the mercy of the triune God, let us join with one another to pray for the many needs of the world. O triune God, bless the preaching and reception of your word and pour your spirit on your church. Strengthen us for our work for equality and justice for all your beloved people. Hold the churches of all denominations together as one, as you are one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O triune God, as at the beginning of time, your word and spirit visited the earth, so now sustain this planet with your renewing care. Teach us to care for the very good earth that you have created. Calm the summer storms, and send rain where there is drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O triune God, guide with your powerful mercy our troubled nation, where relationships are fractured and injustice marks the land. Heal our wounded people, give hope to the despairing, protect the protesters, preserve our cities from more tumult, and keep away those intent on destruction. Be with our police and National Guard as they stand against this violence. Guide our president, our governors, and our legislators in moving forward from a history of racism into a future of justice and equality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O triune God, enfold those in need of healing in mind, body, or spirit with your peace, those whom we name in our hearts. We ask your mercy on the millions who suffer from the coronavirus, the sick, the dying, the bereaved, the unemployed, Uphold medical workers and accompany researchers as they develop a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, bring us into the mystery of your tri triune life. We praise you as life giver, pain bearer, mercy maker. Accept now the prayers of our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O triune God, we praise you for all the saints who in the past and the present have lived and died in you. At the end, bring us all in, into your merciful, loving presence. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O God, and receive also those petitions that are too deep for words. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessing of the God of peace and justice be with you. May the blessing of the Son who weeps the tears of the world's suffering be with you. And may the blessing of the Spirit who inspires us to reconciliation and hope be with you. Go this day in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
go in peace to bear Christ's love to the world. Thanks be to God.